Welcome to the Chasing Tone Podcast. I am Brian Wampler. Mm-hmm. I'm Max. Max Jeffries. Welcome. Yes. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> today on today's show, we got some cool stuff. We talk about where to put your EQ on a pedal board and why and how that changes the sound of things. We talk about uh, the, the advice we give to someone who's just starting out on a guitar. And we also talk about our uh, first piece of good gear, right? Yeah. All right. So with that... Let's get into the show. Question is, how do I use EQ on a pedal board? And why would I want to? What's the difference when it's in the loop? And what's the difference in using it in front of or behind distortion? That's a good question. So right now, I have uh, it's set up. I have the guitar going through a tuner. And um, that going into the Boss EQ. And that going into our Plex Distortion. And then it goes into another EQ, but that's for a different reason. And then it's going into, what are we running into? We're running into a, a deluxe reverb. So um, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna demonstrate what happens whenever you put it in front of it. So I'll, I'll boost the mids and it's gonna give you more of like what a tube skimmer would do. Um, I can also boost the level and it gives you more gain as well. And we can even actually change the EQ and make it into a fuzz. So without anything is on, without any uh, uh, EQ on, just the plug distortion, uh, I'll let Max play my brand new smoking hot Ibanez RG350 MDX. It's awesome. It feels like it's made out of MDF. That's that's the <laughs> <laughs> for you wood guys out there. That's like sawdust and that's, glue. Uh, that's a carpenter joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, uh, sorry. That's, that's terrible. That's, it's been a while. We haven't had one of these. This is a, it's a little awkward. It's a little my off. hands are a little sweaty. sweaty. I know. It feels like a first date again. I know. So like we're going to snuggle after this. This and... time, don't touch my butt. So. <laughs> Somebody's buying me dinner. Anyways, <laughs> so without further awkwardness, when Brian hit my uh, tuner. <laughs> oh, yeah. My kill switch. Yeah, your, you your mute switch. That's, right. a, that's a make Max shut up switch. <laughs> Did you buy that lick at Toys R Us? I did. As a uh, Fisher Price, my first lick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let me boost around boost 800K, or boost 1.6K, and 400 just a bit. And uh, let's see. That's probably about 12 dB or so at the most. So same thing. I'll kick on the pedal right in the middle of you playing. <laughs> So let me take some bass down. I've got the level all the way up. So that's probably a cool thing. Play like a chord without it. Uh, turn on, play it. adds gain it's true you like the way it feels uh, yeah this guitar is definitely not known for tone <laughs> <laughs> it's known for a tone a, but... a tone it's not a good one but it does that tone very well <laughs> <laughs> okay so let me let's fuzz it up so i'm going to increase all the bottom end you fuzz it up <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so so and that's that's I heard a lot of people ask about what's the difference between a fuzz and distortion. A uh, big difference is the way that you make a fuzz is you make a bunch of bass distort, and then at the back end you take the bass out, so it's not too booming. Hmm. So and so that's really what I'm just approximating here. Is that a word? That's probably a word, right? Approximating, sure. Yeah, we'll roll though. Yeah, it's a, it, I just made it up. So if yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> approximating. <laughs> It's like hypothesizing. <laughs> That's a word too. Yeah. Sure. So anyways, <laughs> we're increasing the bass on the EQ. Uh, I took out the bass on the Plex distortion because if I, if I run it normal, look how boomy it gets. <laughs> kind of 
kind of big muffy that way. Yeah, not very like, much so. Not like a straight up big muff, but that sort of fuzzy type of type of tone. Puts in the ballpark. Yep. So, so that's whenever you run it before it. Um, give me just a second. I'll swap the pedals. I'll put the EQ behind the plex distortion, and we'll do the same exact test. Cool. All right. So running the plex distortion with the same settings into the EQ. Um, I'll do the same thing. I will boost the mids up about the same way. Take some. <laughs> You're loving on my arm with that neck, aren't you? <laughs> little RG love. The little RG love. Okay. So um, I may have to ride the volume on the on the EQ a little bit because it's actually it's increasing signal, which may distort the mic since the amp will be louder. So that's what I'll be doing here. All right. So let's see. Without the pedal, without the EQ pedal. I gotta hit my max setup switch. Uh, <laughs> did? What, what are you waiting on? Okay, now with the EQ pedal. It's like way different. It's like honky now. Hey, 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 hey! Oh, you gotta censor me again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we are in Martinsville. Okay, so now let me let me do the same thing. Let me turn the bass up all the way. I'm gonna have to turn this level down. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. that probably clipped the mic when we turn it down a little more. It's like somebody put a blanket on your amp. Yeah, it's 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 basically the suck setting. You know <laughs> the I mean? suck setting. So between that and this guitar, that's, <laughs> that's a great <laughs> equation for suck. So, but I mean, what I like to do, like personally, it, I mean, it's all about what you feel like you're missing or what you want, you know? So like maybe I, w maybe I actually want to drop some of that 800 hertz out. Um, maybe I want to add a little, just a little bit more highs to it maybe. Like maybe, maybe like for example, if you're gonna play on the neck pickup, you probably want a little more highs to it, you know? Um, and with the pedal on, it sounds like this. So, not that that's that much better. Really here in that bridge. Yeah, the different sound. So you know, if if I was just going to be using the the neck pickup, I probably would set up. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. If I was switching back between the bridge and the neck, oh, gotcha. I would probably turn that turn it off with the uh, bridge, and with the neck, I would probably set the 6.4k up just a smidge, and that would give me a little little bit of something in the neck. Like single lines or something like that. So like a. Versus. So there's really like no set way you have sure. to use it. It just is. I mean, it depends on the amp. If it was a, if it's a really dull amp, that's a good trick to brighten it up. Is hit that 6.4k up a little bit. Um, and other EQs have different points as well. So it could be, I don't remember the points on like an MXR off the top of my head, but let's say I probably would want it more around 8K or something for more like presence. Um, if, if you're using an amp that doesn't have a lot of bottom end, then increasing the 100 a bit and the 200 just a smidgen does a ton of difference um, for, for something like that. But this amp, I mean, it, this got a quite a, Decent amount of bass, it sounds like. Yeah. So, in the room, anyways. You can use this kind of the same thing. Like if you refer switching between like single coils, mm -hmm. are they sounding different or humbuckers that sound different? Mm -hmm. Could you use that EQ to kind of make it more homogenous? Mm -hmm. Yep. So or even, or even like, like if you had a Les Paul, for example, yeah. and you're switching back between Les Paul, and like a Strat, two drastically different sounds. <laughs> Very. You know, and and so you may have the EQ set up differently, like for the Les Paul, to make it work with your amp you're using or whatever. Awesome. You know what I mean? Um, or it could just be that you have a really sucky distortion pedal that, <laughs> and you want to make it, you want to put some shine on it. Now that's, that's another way to do it is just using an EQ after it. So anyways, so that's how I would use an EQ before or after. As far as using it inside of an effects loop, it's basically going to be the same thing. So I mean, it's, it's going to act pretty much the same way as we have here, um, assuming we're using a clean channel. If we're using a dirty channel of the amp, it's the same principle. So before the distortion is just going to kind of tailor those frequencies that get distorted. Um, if you put it in the loop, it's going to act just like it does here, where 
where you run it after the distortion and actually change the frequencies uh, rather, you know, after they're distorted. So I think that makes sense. Yeah. Does that make sense to you? Okay. What advice would you give a new guitar player? Practice makes perfect. And like, especially like students I've had or that sort of thing, I get a, especially a lot of beginners that'll play like an hour or two hours straight. And they're so frustrated because they feel like they haven't made a lot of a headway. I tell my students, or just any any advice in general, is 15 minutes at a time. Pick it up, you know, after you get done eating your sandwich, 15 minutes. Wake up, play for 15 minutes. 15 minutes, five or six times a day is really a lot of focused practice. Um, that's, that's it, good just, stuff. just hack at it, you know? Yeah. Don't get frustrated. What, what about the kid that, I mean, so let me ask you this question if you're just starting out. If you're like all gung-ho, like I'm gonna be the next Steve I or whatever, are you going to practice four hours every night starting out, or do you think that's a good way to burn out? That's a good way to burn out. I mean, I really do. Like, at least like for me, being a guitar player, and like I know my attention span small because I can barely look at the camera while I'm talking about this. <laughs> is you know, 15 minutes at a time. That's really after 15 minutes, I'm like, oh my god. Like, how many YouTube videos have you watched? Like 15 minutes, you're like. Oh, okay, anything past that, you're fast forwarding parts, or you're doing this, or you're doing that. Right. 15 minutes, concentrated practice, then put it down, do anything else, you know, non guitar related, then come back to it. That's a good analogy. YouTube videos, yeah. 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 If you can't watch four hours of YouTube videos straight in a row, <laughs> you're probably not going to play guitar for four straight hours. There's some guy but, watching this podcast, it's like Max is talking, we're going to fast forward this part. You know? <laughs> oh He's God. looking at the timeline. <laughs> Max answers this question. Damn. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. I would, yeah, that's great advice. I, I tend some not like like a virtuoso, of course, and like most of my practicing is because I'm practicing for <laughs> like, like practicing my A and G chords, you know, while I'm you know running through some effect or something, right? Um, so like I tend to think don't don't worry so much about like what pedal you're using or what amp you're using. Guitar wise, I mean, as long as it's set up decent and plays decent, then you're in good shape. Um, you don't want the action to be, you know, that high off the fretboard. So your $30 guitar probably isn't going to be your best bet. But I mean, like this was like 160 bucks or something, right? So it, and it's, so it's pretty expensive, but I mean, it, it'd be just, cool enough. yeah, I mean, it'd be just fine for someone starting out, you know, and, um, and not, not that it has to be an awesome Ibanez from the eighties or whatever, but, um, you know, just something that, that, uh, that plays decent. Uh, don't worry about amps or anything. I mean, the truth is, like, okay, if I'm if I'm mimicking how I'm going to be as a very beginning <laughs> guitar player, then I'm going to turn the guitar upside down. Let me, let me turn off my distortion because that's pretty pointless for this exercise. So, you know, I'm a beginning guitar player. I've just learned my first few chords. You got the max setup switch on. I got the. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, so that's that's my that's my G <laughs> yeah. chord, and then I, I also got the C chord. That's hard to do backwards. Okay. It's nice. <laughs> you know, got my got my gear shifter. Got on. the gear shifter. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not if I, if I'm at that level, there is no pedal that's going to make that change any different. In fact, let's yeah. put on a two hundred dollar pedal. And play the same thing and see what it does. It's real nice. <laughs> wang, 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 wang bar. Yeah, and, and then I got like, let's do a bar chord. Let me think how to do this here. So, yeah. Uh, here, <laughs> that's hard to do that way. Nice. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Got Roadhouse next. So I mean, it, it's it's quite a bit different than if you're if you're at a level where, where you're going. <laughs> whoops. <laughs> that. I mean, not that I'm great, but I mean, if you're playing licks and that sort of thing, you're at that point your ears probably gonna be developed enough where you're starting to hear the difference between a cheaper distortion. Yeah. Or a cheaper guitar or a cheaper amp. You know what I mean? Something that's just doesn't have a attention to detail that, that a higher end product is gonna have. 
you know. So that's what I would say. Less 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 Mel Bay or less eBay, more Mel Bay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, I stole that off the gear page, by the way. <laughs> uh, so next question: What was your first quality piece of gear? So Max, what was your first good piece of gear? Guitar, amp, or pick, cable? Honestly, it'd probably be my guitar. It's actually in my office. I'll have to get Bob to get some pictures of it. It's a 90, 1997 California Series Strat. It was one of these like really weird Strats where they like painted in Mexico and the pickups are Mexican, or the body and neck are uh, American, and they like they came between the two factories and assembled it, and realized it probably cost too much to ship back and forth. But I worked like all summer and saved up like every penny I had to, to get it. So. Mm -hmm. I'll start with my pedal because actually this is one of the very first pedal I had that was good. It was probably my first decent pedal. So I'd had a lot of $30, $20 distortion pedals, you know. Yeah, so rock tax in there. Because mom wouldn't buy me anything. <laughs> Thanks, mom. We wouldn't, we wouldn't buy me anything expensive. So, you know, and I started playing like seven or whatever. I got a picture we could throw up here too when I was seven playing. Uh, but anyways, the, I actually uh, sold this to a friend and bought it back to him. And it was, it's an old OD-1, <laughs> Boss OD-1. Those are cool, though. Yeah, it, it doesn't have a power jack. I don't know why. Did you check it out? But um, No, I didn't. It came that way. So I got it, I got it used off someone. Replace and your output jack there, or at least the nut? It, I, I probably have the skills now to actually put <laughs> another one in. I might, I might try that at some point. I don't, I don't know. I'll have to look on the internet to see if there's any directions. So I'll do that. <laughs> Max, <laughs> put your soldering gun. But, you know, my first good guitar was... Uh, I think it was like a West Tone, which is like not that great, but it was like yeah. it was better than like the eighty dollar guitar I was playing at the time because <laughs> yeah. it was like a hundred and eighty or whatever. Um, Did you hit your brother with that guitar? No, that was my acoustic. Oh, okay. My very first acoustic was it was like <laughs> you know I was like seven, six or seven, and uh, I wanted a guitar for Christmas, and uh, my parents Santa Claus brought me an acoustic guitar with this. It was felt like it was set up more for slide because the action <laughs> yeah, was, was so bad. Ride. So yeah, he made me mad and I hit him in the butt with it and shattered it. <laughs> and he was like seven years older than me, so he didn't like he just like lifted me up and like, don't ever do that again. You know. Merry Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> it was a great <laughs> Christmas moment, let me tell you. That makes for scarring memories. But anyways, <laughs> yeah, so um uh let's see. My actually probably my actually first one is it's not even over there, darn it. it it's my uh Fender Telecaster, my fifty two Telecaster, so 52 reissue and uh yeah i was at uh what wasn't called what was it called mars music oh yeah remember, yeah remember, yeah, yeah. remember that mars music it's the same action now i think yeah. Indy, yeah so i was playing in a band my first country band <laughs> i yeah. went from playing like like rockier type college stuff you know what i mean to like yeah. needing twangy stuff yeah because I, I just I'd moved out on my own i'm like i gotta i gotta pay some bills man <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. there's a billion country bands in indiana so uh, I joined a country band and learned how to try to play some country, and so I had to buy a Telecaster. There you go. So, <laughs> yeah. So, all right. So hope you guys enjoyed the show. That's it for today. Uh, if you're listening on iTunes, make sure you send us an email at podcast at wamplerpedals.com. Please review this on iTunes. I know that it's kind of changed over the past couple months as far as what we've done. So yeah. maybe review it again or tell your friends to review it. Maybe have your mom review it. If, uh, if you've already reviewed it. And um, yeah, if you're watching on YouTube, leave a comment, share this with your friends, and uh, send Max pictures of, of your first gear. Sure. Yeah, I mean, we can make fun of it. <laughs> 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 All right, so uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.